Welcome in the latest episode of Five on the Floor and the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for finding us on your favorite podcast app. We're on Spotify. We're on Podbean. We are on all of them. Apple Podcasts, of course, is where most people find us. Also, check us out on Dash Radio. Download the Dash Radio app for free. Search for Nothing But Net. We're there every single day at 7 p.m. Also, FiveReasonsSports.com for all the latest articles from Brady Hawk and others. we got a Marlins team that's going to start writing there as well. We do not have a paywall. Also, Alfredo Arteaga from Three Yards Per Carry has put up his rankings of every quarterback, every starting quarterback in the NFL. So see where Tua and others fit. That is always a conversation starter. Also, the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network. That includes our friends over at Best Ever. Make sure you check it out at bstevr.com. That's BST evr.com this is a new simulator you can simulate just about anything you can sub players in on certain nfl teams again they're just starting with football now but they got the coming soon on the nba bracket and that's going to be a lot of fun we're going to do that here on the podcast because when that comes on we can basically simulate the 2012 2013 heat against the warriors from later in that decade we can go jordan teams against lebron teams we can put lebron on some bulls teams and jordan maybe on those heat big three teams and see how that would have played out. But for now they've got the NFL there. So make sure that you check that out. You can play again, legendary teams against each other, sub in different players. And not only will they tell you who would have won most of the time when they do the simulation, but additionally they'll give you a game story and they'll also give you a box score. So you can see exactly how things went and here's the best part. It's free. So check it out. BSTEVR.com, BSTEVR.com. There's nothing quite like this. We've put it up on our YouTube, YouTube channel as well. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to a comment that Al- Alex just put in here uh, about that. <laughs> Alfredo Arteaga piece, he's got Tannehill as the fifth best quarterback of the NFL. Who would have said that a couple, couple, of, uh, couple of years ago? Anyway, Spoon. <laughs> best ever, BSTEVR.com. And now tonight's episode. One, two, three, four, five on the floor. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick with Alex Toledo and Greg Sylvander, part of the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, Ethan Skolnick back on five on the floor. We've got the full crew here tonight. Alex Salito back from the arena, no longer being yelled at on press row. Also, we've got Greg Sylvander. He's back from his one day hiatus. Thanks to Marco Moromo for being freed long enough. Um, he's still not free on Twitter, uh, but to join us, the Heat are now 17 and 17. They've won six games in a row. That's the longest winning streak active in the NBA after the Nets loss. As we speak tonight, they're the five seed, although that could change by the end of the night because these teams are like so bunched up together. The Knicks are the fourth seed. They've already had a parade. We're going to focus on two different topics here tonight because they're, to me, the two biggest topics that have been on Twitter of late uh, related to the Heat. One is Kelly Olenek, um, who has sort of replaced Kendrick Nunn as the most polarizing member of the Heat. Um, although most of the talk about him is negative, and yet the statistics say it should be positive. So we're going to get into Kelly first and really whether or not it is sustainable to continue to play him at the four spot next to Bam Adebayo. And the second part of the episode, I know that Alex and I are going to get into it because we're going to, we're going to talk about Victor Oladipo, who's a Toledo favorite, uh, and Kendrick Nunn. All right, so let's get to this part first. Kelly Olenek. I'm just going to give you some, some one raw number here, and then I know, Greg, you have some others uh, that were put out there on Twitter by, by some folks. Uh Kelly Olenek this year, his net rating is third on the team. Uh, Right now, this is on the NBA's uh, official advanced stats site. Jimmy Butler, who's only played 21 games, by the way. Goran Dragic has played 20. Jimmy is a plus five in net rating. Goran is a plus three in net rating. Kelly Olenek is a plus 1.9. Duncan Robinson is a plus 0.4. Bam Adebayo, interestingly, is a minus 0.2. Kendrick Nunn is a minus two, Gabe Vincent minus 2.3, Avery Bradley, small sample size, minus 2.4, Tyler Hero minus 3.5, Andre Iguodala minus 3.6, Precious uh, minus five, and they go back, uh, Silva hasn't played much, Struce is a minus 7.4, Maurice Harkless somehow in 10 games is a minus 14.8 per 100 possessions, and Casey Akpala, people want him to play more, a minus 19.7 in 18 games for, I guess, a total of 181 minutes. That's a minus 19.7 in 100 possessions. So you go through basically the entire roster. 
Kelly Olenek is a solid third, Greg. Now you have some other numbers here. Yes. Yeah, so this comes by virtue of the common sense heat fan at the mad heat fan, I believe is his um, Twitter handle. Uh, and it, he was kind of uh, relating it to um, Kelly and how he fits next to players and, and closing lineups and things like that. And, um, you know, we talked a lot about um, Kelly and how he fits next to Bam and, and next to Jimmy. If you look at net rating playing alongside Bam and Jimmy, um, Kelly is a plus 11, which like for, for context, Myers is a plus nine, Winslow plus seven, uh, Jay and Iggy were minus nine and minus three, um, Mo was minus 33 KZ minus 67. So like, these are just numbers that are showing that Kelly fits with these guys, but this is where it gets interesting to me is that we know Kelly is not going to be able to close. And I think that they're not going to be able to run away from the fact that although he can get them through the regular season, he fits next to Bam and Jimmy. He does things that necessarily don't always show up in the box score that I think Spo likes. And um, we probably just don't hear enough about those things, the little stuff. Um, and like, but at some point they're going to have to figure out who's going to close and it can't always be Iggy. So they're going to have to find a guy like a Jay uh, to come in and fill that void. Alex, uh, I test versus stats here. Um, that's always one of the questions we have here on five on the floor. Uh, before we again dive more into the stats, what does the eye test tell you with Kelly? Well, if you're just talking about the eye, <clears throat> the eye test, excuse me, I would say that you know Kelly is their most reliable stretch big to play next to Bam and to play in between Bam and Jimmy. Like like what I was saying, I pretty much echo everything he says there. Like I think he's somebody who you can absolutely leave in the starting lineup and feel good about it during the regular season. I just think once you get to the playoffs and the matchups start getting a lot tougher and uh, guys start getting picked on and Kelly just won't be able to play as many minutes. And uh, like Blaze said, I don't think he's going to be somebody who closes, but from what I see on the court from Kelly is somebody who knows how to play ball, pretty much executes everything that Spo wants him to, and just has a lot of physical limitations, specifically the short arms, the slower legs. And that's kind of what makes him vulnerable on the, on the defensive end. I think you know, people want him to be a better rebounder. He's definitely not, I don't, I don't think he's good enough of, of a rebounder. Um, like I think he's a solid uh, weak side rim protector at times, not, you know, not consistently enough. I just think he's pretty much exactly what they need from him, but not enough to, you know, take you to that next step in the playoffs. I think he's a, he's a great regular season guy and I would just love it if he were back on the bench as far as for to, to optimize their chances at getting back to the conference finals or NBA finals. That's it right there. Getting back to the bench. Like I feel like, we all love Kelly Olynyk in his role. We love his productivity. Even though he's inconsistent, we think that he fits well. So nobody is against any of that. It's just that there's um, a notion to maybe have an upgrade going into the playoffs. Well, the plan wasn't to play Kelly at the four. I mean, if you look at the first two games of the season, it was Mo Harkless and then it was Myers. Correct. Leonard, right. Bad so, plan. Bad plan. Right. So Mo was supposed to be Jay, which I will never understand how that was possible but right. that was how it was supposed to break well, down like I talked about he was the he was the backup option right he he was right well yeah it was supposed to be maurice uh it was supposed to be marcus morris right i mean and so it, since it wasn't marcus morris then it was maurice harkless but it's not the first time they looked at maurice harkless i mean they had maurice harkless the year before and ended up flipping him yeah. to make the butler trade work i mean so it, it's not the first time that they've liked him but obviously that didn't work the plan was not for it to be a guadala I said that when they put Olenek, when he put Olenek in the starting lineup, when Spolster put him in, it almost seemed like it was more a move to get the bench right because he wanted to get, uh, you know, Andre with Precious, uh, Dragic, and Bradley together on the bench. Like but he's made the starters better. Right, but he did make the starters better. And again, that is – but see, that's the dichotomy here. That's what we're dealing with is that he does make this – he makes players better when he's playing with them even when he went through a stretch where I think he was three of 20 or three of 29 during that stretch from three, two of 29. How is that even possible? I mean, he's getting open look after open look. I, I saw, you know, last night he passed on a couple of transition threes, which typically he bomb away with 16 seconds left on the clock. But like, I mean, 
if you had a guy who was, and Kelly has done this over the course of his career. It's not like he's been a terrible shooter all the time. If you had a guy who was making 38% during that period of time, instead of what was it? 7%. Yeah. I mean, you're blowing open games. Yeah, no, I mean, he's gone from 33 to 32 to 31% in the month of February. And here's, this is staggering in itself in 16 home games from three point land Kelly Olynyk is shooting 43.3% on six attempts in away games in 17 away games. He's shooting 20.8% on 5.6 attempts. So Jeez. I don't know. There's no crowds, but something is impacting him home and away. Cause those are just huge contrasts. I mean, that doesn't make any sense, right? I mean, like you said, there are no crowds. <laughs> why, why is he twice as good at home? I mean, I bet I you the heat shooting splits, by the way, if we were to look it up right now that the heat are, take a nice little dip in three point percentage home versus away. I think without having looked that up, no, I bet you're probably right. You're probably, you're probably, but it right. is weird though. Cause there's no crowd, like you said, or pretty much, pretty much. Well, no. It, crowd. It, it, it could be a shooting background thing. We talked about it during the bubble last year that, that the heat got comfortable with that shooting background. We thought they no, would. Duncan is better. Duncan Duncan's is 41% better. at three. I bet at, you hero is better too. Wow. Yeah. Duncan's better. Let's just check one more and then we won't deviate too far. Um, yes, hero is, um, almost three and a half points better. Wow. Yeah. Percentage points. I mean, right. But, but that's different for 20 percentage points. Like uh, Kelly is two different players home and road. And yet it, it, like I said, it doesn't seem to impact his plus minus, which is basically how the team is doing when he's on the floor. And because there is no other option next to bam, I mean, Spolster hasn't even experimented a little bit with Precious and Bam next to each other. He experimented with Precious and Akpala next to each other uh, as much as he has experimented with those two. So he doesn't even see that as an option. So I guess by default, it was always going to be Kelly. But we saw Kelly get pushed out of the rotation two years ago. We thought it was because of that minutes clause that he had. And then they get in the bubble. And then they, right. And then they got in the bubble and he had some games in the bubble where he was more comfortable. Um, I, so, okay. To close the loop on this, cause there is this big debate and, and I, I look, Kelly Olenek's a nice guy. Um, I think he's done good work with the heat. I don't think that's been a horrific contract. Like if you look at the five contracts that they signed during those two off seasons, you do think, or you don't. No, no, not at all. I don't think it was a bad contract. No, I think he it, did it, more yeah. serviceable. You're no, totally it's serviceable. Right. It, was, it was fine. I think he lived basically up to the expectations of the contract, whereas Waiters did not, JJ did not, Whiteside did not, Tyler Johnson did not. He, he's the only one of those five that did. So I do think we need to put some of this sort of, uh, you know, this heat, vitri heat fan vitriol. And again, it's a Twitter thing. I don't know that it would be the case if we were in an arena. But like uh, this heat fan vitriol towards Olenek, I think has to be put into some kind of perspective there. Um, because he has been a productive player for the Heat. He's never going to be the guy I thought he was going to be when I saw him in Summer League. I, I was there for his rookie year in Summer League with Boston, and he looked like Larry Bird. Okay, I, I've never – I mean, I mean, he, he was the best player on the court as a rookie in Summer League, and I don't feel – He was really nice at Gonzaga, man. No, he was, but I don't feel as a shooter, as a scorer, he ever got much better. I think he improved other aspects of his game, um, particularly – you know, some of the ball handling and, and the dribble handoff stuff that was incorporated with the heat, the Kelly, you know, the Kelly keeper and all that. I, I don't, he never took the next step as a score. He had that one game with the Celtics in the playoffs, but other than that, it, that really didn't happen. I'm glad you said that because I miss all the stuff Kelly was doing when he was off the bench and, and not to just make it about him being like a bench player. I'm not trying to, you know, talk down on him. I understand why Heat fans are frustrated. Like he's an easy guy to pick on, especially when he's not making his threes. It just seems like, okay, what do you have him out there for? But when he was off the bench, and I think it's kind of fair because he is largely just spotting up a lot when he's out there uh, in the starting lineup. They'll have him screen sometimes, but mostly he, he's spotting up and spacing the floor. And, you know, that's just kind of what happens when you put somebody next to Bam there. That's the way that, the, that they've deployed their fours. But off the bench last year and, and even some this season, like they would do the dribble handoff stuff through him. He would, you know, he would throw the keeper here every now and then and like, now his game has just been kind of turned into straight up stretch big, just uh, better Luke Babbitt or better Josh McRoberts or however you want to look at it. And I kind of miss when he was doing, when he had more of the all around game in that role off the bench where he was just kind of helping get Goron and Hero going. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Now let me ask you this question because we talk about Kelly and whether or not he's doing other things. When their shots are not falling, which of these two players is giving you more? 
Duncan or Kelly? Hmm. Wow, that's a really interesting question because I think I'm going to say Duncan. I, I would say that it, it would be Duncan, but you would. We don't have the instruments that can measure or quantify why, but it's Duncan. It's yeah. just because there's more respect for him as a shooter. Is that yeah, why? Yeah, it's got the, it's the attention, the gravity. I feel like if you were to ask Jimmy, Bam, and Tyler, like, um, you know, those two guys, you, you know, who helps in those scenarios, I think they would lean in Duncan's direction. Well, I'll tell but- you, I'll tell you for sure. Neither Jimmy nor Bam wants Kelly traded. So, I mean, mm. the, 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 there, there is a, no, the team loves him. Like I sat, yeah. I sat on the bench and shoot around uh, in Charlotte two years ago and Josh Richardson, justice Winslow, Derek Jones, Jr. Even Hassan Whiteside, they gushed over Kelly Olenek. They could not praise him enough. Um, and, and that has just continued with all of the teammates. I mean, they love him there. Well, he always has a smile on his face. He'll take a charge. Um, He'll he, punish he, uh, mismatches. I miss when he when yeah. he would do that more too off the bench. When he yeah. would just take smaller guys into the post. He's still good at that. So so let's let's answer the next question because again I don't think we can really settle the debate about how important he is or not. Except I think we all agree he's better off in a bench role in a twenty minute a game. If he's got it going, you stay with him. If not, you don't roll. Okay, as opposed to now, I think we're all kind of in agreement on that. But but let's ask this question. We've talked about their need for a four, right? So if you, let's say you got a guy like, I don't know, it seems like Thad Young's going to be expensive. Let, let, let's say you get a guy like Rudy Gay, okay? You immediately plug Rudy Gay in as a starting four and move Kelly to the bench? I don't That's think so. Question. I think you start with KO and you, um, you wait for a losing. I mean, this is the thing that every, everybody needs to understand. As long as the team continues to win yeah, and play the, the way that they're playing now, they're, not and nothing the is changing no matter what <laughs> trades they make Correct. or who they sign. Right. But if, inevitably, they're going to have a two-game slide or something like that, or, or the offense is going to get bogged down. And even if they squeak out victories, it's not going to look not, you know, pretty enough. And then there could be the opportunity to insert a new player. But I think for now, they would stick with KO. I yeah. think that makes a lot of sense. And honestly, especially because, you know, they've just been winning so many games. And like Ethan has hinted at before, Spo likes to, you know, kind of throw new wrinkles coming and um, come playoff time and throwing Rudy in there, just like they threw Crowder in there, you know, kind of last second in the beginning of the first round might be the move, for example. I, I think, mm-hmm. and also Rudy Gay's been coming off the bench for the Spurs all season and they've been pretty good. Uh, him and Patty Mills have just been, you know, They've been a really good bench unit over there. So I think it would actually make a lot of sense to bring him off as a bench piece and then kind of change it up come playoff time if they really want to get back to the type of defense they were running last year in the bubble. Well, the only the only way they can change the starting lineup in the playoffs is if they make a move. There's nobody else they can put as a starting four next to Bam I, at this stage. I, I don't I don't it's not gonna be Harkless, it's not gonna be Akpala. I mean and what I if just, there's an injury? Like that's like another thing we haven't well, even talked sure. about. Like there's nobody behind Olenek that fits the bill of what they need that, that oh would really God. fit seamlessly. You know what I mean? Yeah, Andre would be starting. I well, I mean, I don't think that's what they want, but yeah, I mean, I, and again, no disrespect to Andre. I just don't think they want him in that role. They want him. I don't think he wants to be in that role either. No, I, I don't think so. Well, it's funny because, you know, there was that big conversation that Steve Kerr had to have with Andre to put him on the bench in the first place. But now obviously that's, you know, he, he wrote a book called the sixth man. So, I mean, you know, ultimately, <laughs> ultimately uh, he embraced it. I, I think this is a good debate for us to have because I think on Twitter it gets so nasty. And I, again, I, Kelly doesn't deserve that. Okay. He's going through a shooting slump. It wouldn't stun me if Kelly had a 10 for 17 stretch from three. He's still up and down. I think that's absolutely fair. And as fans, it's like, it can drive you a little bit crazy because you, you think of this guy as a shooter and you know, he can shoot, but then he's just so up and down. And then on top of that, like he, he throws in the little off balance looks where it's not your typical, just spot up shot. Like he adds a little bit of flair to it. You're hey, like, but they're winning the despite it. Duncan Robinson. Yeah. But where I said they're winning anyway. Greg's right. There's not going to be any changes as long as as long as that's happening. All right, we're going to get briefly to this Oladipo uh, nun conversation that we want to have. Before we do, we want to tell you to go to manscape.com. That's right. Use the code 5RSN. You can get all of their products there. Of course, the perfect package 3.0. I had to reserve one of these for our guy, Ricky J. Mark. He's been asking me for six months for all of the below the waist grooming needs, but also the new cologne with the same signature scent that's in all Manscaped formulas. The cologne's a perfect complement to the collection. 
love saying this light approachable and gentlemanly in all the right ways think of it as your wingman for the night to keep you fresh and ready for anything and the beautifully designed glass bottle makes a statement the manly scent is attractive to set the mood so check it out not just the perfect package 3.0 but also of course the new refined cologne to complete your set and smell great anytime anywhere 20 percent off plus free shipping with the code 5RSN. That's 5RSN, 20% off, plus free shipping. Everything comes in this one box. I got to say this before we get to the next part. Your balls and body will thank you. All right, let's get to this tweet that I threw out to there, guys. Um, and I think Alex is going to one who's going to challenge me on this the most, uh, honestly. But I- I'm fine with the transaction talk, okay? I mean, it fuels our network. <laughs> we get our biggest numbers. Not when we're talking about games, but when we're talking about who they're going to get. That's just don't, the way. Don't give, away, don't give away the game. I mean, that's what it is. We know that. Okay. We know that. All right. <laughs> but I, I, I tweeted it this morning. All right. And, and, and I, I firmly believe this. And I, was, I looked at all the numbers. Kendrick Nunn has been putting up the same numbers as Victor Oladipo of late. I'm talking about the counting stats. Okay. Roughly 17, 18 points a game. The assists, the rebounds, they're all in the same area with much higher percentages. Uh, Victor is shooting 39%. He just turned down a two-year extension, max extension from Houston. Shooting 39% overall, 29% from three in Houston. Okay. Kendrick Nunn of late has been shooting in the high 40s overall, like close to 48%, 48, 49%, and low 40s from three. Okay. I mean, it's not close. Now, I understand that Oladipo, and I tweeted this, traditionally a far superior defender, but Nunn's defense, as we've all talked about, Alex, you and I got into it yesterday, has been pretty good of late. And so I said it's starting to think that Heat fans just want to trade for the sake of a trade. Alex, you've been an Oladipo guy since the beginning. You think he's going to get back to full form. We know he wants to be here. Can you make a case that it's enough of an upgrade, that it, especially with Oladipo going into a contract year, well, he's in a contract year, going into the end of his deal where you're going to have to resign him if you want to keep him, I know none can get paid too, but it's not going to be paid like Oladipo because of track record. Can you make a case that the the difference between them is great enough that it would be worth trading Kendrick Nunn and parts to get Victor Oladipo and his bird rights right now? Yes, for sure. Uh, I'm not here to say that Kendrick Nunn, you know, I'm over here just looking to trade him. I'm, I'm really, really encouraged by the growth that he's shown, and I think he can sustain something close to it. I don't, I don't know that he's going to give you 20, 22 point seven assists on zero turnovers on a regular basis. But to me, the whole case is based off of the type of role that these guys are playing and have played in the past. I still think Kendrick Nunn, obviously his role has, has grown. It's not, he's not just, you know, like he's taking more shots and he has more responsibility than he did in the starting lineup last year. He's, he's had some growth and obviously some of that has had to do with the guys missing, but it's, it's made him into a better player. So I'm not here to rag on Kendrick Nunn. I completely understand the, the cost conversation and that whole angle. That's a, a different type of angle uh, as, as far as whether it's worth it or not. I, I think basketball-wise, it's worth it. I think the statement about, you know, Heat fans just wanting to make a trade just to make a trade actually applies more to the conversation we had last night with John Collins than, than this conversation. I think Oladipo is somebody who defensively fills a need offensively can raise their floor and is a different type of player than Kendrick Nunn. Like I don't think Kendrick Nunn has ever had the type of role all the depot has had the past few years, especially that one year where he just went crazy. And I'm not, and I know that we point to that and say, he's only done it once. I still think that, you know, the, the seasons after that, before the injuries, like he was still a really effective player and was, had already turned the tide into becoming like, okay, this guy is a, is a certified all-star. Now maybe he didn't do it long enough, but I just think they're really different types of players. Like I still think Kendrick Dunn feeds off of what the best players on the heat do and has added stuff to his game. Whereas Oladipo is somebody who can do stuff by himself and within the system. I, I don't really feel the same way about none. And although he's gotten better as a playmaker and scorer, I've seen Oladipo do it more. And I think he's somebody who is actually like a real three level scorer when he's in his, you know, when he's peaking, I don't know that he's there now. He's obviously not like, uh, it's a bad, it's a weird situation in Houston. It doesn't seem like he's bought in. And, you know, it's just not a great team. Like, I think if, if you plugged in a guy like Oladipo and threw him into a similar role that none is in, I think he would absolutely thrive here. I think he fills a need. I think he would be cheaper to acquire than John Collins because he's going to be a free agent. And, yeah, like, I just think that actually makes a lot more sense for the Heat if you're talking about doing a trade than, 
you know, trading away a package of Duncan Robinson and Precious or something like that for a John Collins and possibly making your team worse. Like, I understand the need for a front court guy, but to me, like, Oladipo is a much more well-rounded player than Nunn when he's at his best, and that's just really what it comes down to. I think he gets to the rim a lot more than Nunn does. Nunn is absolutely a better shooter, but I don't think Oladipo was a bad shooter, and defensively, he's absolutely the type of guy they need. Well, and here's the other thing. Like, if you acquire Oladipo now, uh, and depending on what what it what it would take to get him. Cause I'll be really honest with you. Like when we, when we start talking about like packages and Kendrick Nunn would probably have to be in that package. It just makes sense. Um, I start flinching when, when we start putting precious in that deal. And it's just cause I haven't seen enough of Oladipo healthy. It's not that I don't trust Oladipo to be a great player. And I think that he would flourish in Miami. He would be happy to be in Miami. It's no, no, no secret there. I think Dwayne could have a particularly interesting influence on Jimmy and Oladipo's relationship in Miami. So I think that there's just lots of tie-ins that could be really good for the organization there. Um, but it's just, it's a matter of, um, if you trade for him now, what's it going to cost? Because if you do it now, you have vehicles with which you could also get a front court player to kind of round out the roster and you could pay Duncan. Like there's ways of doing that. But if you don't make that move, this trade deadline and you wait until the off season and you have to sign and trade for Victor Oladipo, you no longer are going to be able to go over the hard cap to retain Duncan Robinson. So there's like, there's a lots of implications that we have, you know, that we won't go into, but uh, you know, if you like Oladipo and you think that he can be the player that he once was in 2017 with Indy, you got to make the move now. It's interesting because I, I just I'm just not seeing it. I, I don't know. And I, I talked about this on onside today. I, 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 I've enjoyed my interactions with Victor. I thought he was a really good player for that one year in Indiana. He was a really good story. But just some of the stuff I've heard about behind the scenes and I, again, not just the physical stuff, but just I don't he just doesn't strike me as the type to go all in on. And I'm not saying that I'm totally sold on the Kendrick Nutt experience, although I will say this that I don't think Kendrick's backsliding to where he was before. Like, I, I don't think there's, that's not going to happen again. He's not dealing with the external factors, you know, such as COVID. And, and, and we're going to find out like, that's what's thing. great about this whole run is that we're going to find out. We're going to find out if he can, if he can maintain this level when it matters, but I don't think he's going to go back in a rut like he went into before. I, I don't see that. And again, you're talking about a younger player who's going to be a cheaper player. Um, I, I, I I don't know that the difference between them is great enough. And I think where Alex and I differ on this with the Collins thing is I just think what Collins offers is more unique. It's harder to find in the NBA than what Victor offers, particularly when Victor is not Victor at this stage. And when he's kind of quit on two teams at this stage too. I mean, I doesn't oh. feel like he wants to be in Houston from the very beginning. Um, that wasn't his fault. I mean, if you're telling me we're getting John Collins and, um, we keep Kendrick Nunn and Oladipo is out of the question. I'm all in on that move over anything that relates to Oladipo. Let's just go on the record with that. I mean, and I just don't understand it. Like I, I am cool with Collins and adding him to the core, but th that was a kind of point that I was harping on last night. I just wouldn't trade stuff for him. I wouldn't trade Duncan Robinson for him as, you know, headlining a package for Collins. I just don't know if that's a move that makes you better. Cause it's not, it wouldn't just be Duncan. And, and we can say that too. For, you know, a, a, a potential Oladipo trade, it wouldn't just be Kendrick Nunn. But I think, it, you know, just kind of looking at the two and the situations there, it seems like Collins has a higher chance of re-signing in Atlanta and actually getting that type of market, uh, you know, the, the price at the market that he wants than Oladipo does to get in Houston. And so I think Houston would be more willing to sell him off for, you know, maybe not the Heat's best players. And I, again, I'm not looking to just trade Kendrick like I was before. I think like everybody was before, I, I'm. he's looked great as a starter for them. But this is kind of also relevant to the Kelly O'Linen conversation. It's like, do you want to upgrade in order to kind of better your chance at, at really being a championship contender? This is an, another thing that relates to the whole Jimmy's short window for the championship. And like, obviously, like Greg said, the relationships are there. I just think it, it's such a great fit basketball-wise uh, off the floor wise, I really do think they're really different types of players. Like I think Oladipo is somebody who can set stuff for you as a playmaker, get a high pick and roll, get to, get down to the rim, can pull up. Like 
none gets to the rim sometimes, but that's not really the main part of his game. The main part of his game is getting to the jumper, whether it's in the mid range, sometimes he'll give you the floater, but I just think Oladipo is a, you know, a much bigger player, obviously who can guard multiple positions. I really do think that you could make that work and really better your team. Whereas none to me seems like he's good. I don't know how much better he makes you in the playoffs. And wh what about this? I'll pose this question to you guys. What type of role and what type of playing time do you think he gets in the playoffs? Kendrick Nunn. I mean, I think at this stage, I mean, some of it depends on what we thought Avery Bradley was going to be. Right? Yeah. And, and I'm not counting on Avery Bradley. Get, but I don't know. I don't know that. Um, it's a lot in the way there. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know necessarily that Avery Bradley is going to be a factor at this stage. I mean, I feel like, well, I don't know that Gabe Vincent is either, but I feel like Gabe was doing some of the Avery Bradley things in this no, past game. Do you consider those guys incremental production that you get at this point, at least from my perspective, yeah, I, I don't I, expect Avery Bradley to be like this guy that you plug into the rotation. I think Kendrick will have that spot, but when he, if he goes cold, that's an issue. And like, we're going to see now because we've seen how much he relies on confidence and how much he relies on his offensive game and getting to his spots and that kind of thing. So like teams are now going to push him out of his comfort zone more and we're going to see, and hopefully he responds because um, there's not a ton of other options. Uh, no doubt. No doubt. Well, no, I, I think, look, I think it's a good debate. I think we don't disagree on all that many things, honestly. So I, I think this is one that we'll see how this one plays out. I know the Harden was one we disagreed on. Now he may end up being MVP. I don't want to discuss that. Uh, make sure you check out bestever.com, B-S-T-E-V-R.com. Also, uh, mybookie.ag, use the code five, prizepicks.com. Use the code five there as well. Thank you for joining. Oh, manscaped.com. Use the code 5RSN for 20% off. We give you these codes. They help us. They also help you. We'll be back after the game tomorrow night against Atlanta. We'll have a new coach, by the way. Lloyd Pierce, the Heat got another coach fired. Have a good night. So weird. Thank you for listening to the Five on the Floor on the Five Regional Sports Network. <laughs>